This is Brand USA Talks Travel, elevating the conversation about international travel to the United States. Here's your host, Mark Lapidus. Word is that you've walked through every time zone on the planet. Was that a goal of yours, or did it just happen by being an active traveler? It happened by being an active traveler, by working in the outdoor industry. I've been a polar ski guide since 2012, which has afforded me the opportunity to lead expeditions. Wait, did you say polar ski guide? Polar ski guide, that's right. What does a polar ski guide do? We take groups of people to the high Arctic, so to the North Pole, to the South Pole, Antarctica, across Greenland, trainings in Iceland. So my specialty is with North Pole expeditions, so my sense of walking through every time zone, it's pretty easy to walk through every time zone when you're on one of the poles and can walk around in a five foot diameter and hit every single time zone. I never thought of that. And I never imagined you answered the question (laughs) that way. That's really something else. Blows my mind. My guest today on Brand USA Talks Travel is Andrew Leary. Andrew is Director of Sustainable Tourism and Partnerships at Leave No Trace. Andrew also serves on the U.S. Travel and Tourism Advisory Board under U.S. Commerce Secretary Raimondo. He's worked extensively in the outdoor industry in various roles, holds an MS in Parks, Recreation, and Tourism from the University of Utah, and a BA in Journalism from the University of Oregon. Welcome to the podcast, Andrew. Thanks, Mark. Pleasure to be here. I suspect many of our listeners are not familiar with Leave No Trace, so give us the background and mission, please. Yeah. From an organization standpoint, we celebrate our 30th year next year, and we've been the nonprofit organization that's behind everything related to the seven principles of Leave No Trace, which we are most well known for. Where people most frequently see those seven principles are when they visit national parks, national forests, burial of land management, really any public land space in the United States has embraced Leave No Trace as education messaging that helps to protect and sustain stay in the outdoors while also allowing visitors to enjoy the outdoors. I mentioned we've been an organization for 30 years, but the movement actually started in the 1960s with land managers after the Wilderness Act passed in 64. A lot of land managers saw a big increase in people going outdoors and that there were impacts that came with that. And often these impacts are just careless or unintentional or based on uneducated decisions. Rarely are they malicious. And so that's the opportunity that we have with education and really effective messaging to reach people to say, here's what you can do and put into practice now so that these public lands and outdoor spaces can be sustained and protected for generations to come. My youngest many years ago became an Eagle Scout and many of the Leave No Trace principles sound awfully familiar to me from helping him study for his tests. Were you a Boy Scout? I was not in scouting myself. I grew up through a YMCA program and great network just outside of Chicago. So that was my entry point, things like Leave No Trace. But Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, and many other youth serving organizations all across the U.S. have taken Leave No Trace education and built it in as one of their pillars so that young people can start understanding what it means to be caring, responsible, and respectful when we go into the outdoors, not just to nature, but also with other visitors who are proximate to us. Do you find this? This kind of education happens in Europe and Asia, just other places as well, or is it unique to the United States? It definitely happens in different ways across the globe. It happens by different names, certainly, and different cultures will embrace it in kind of non-outdoor ways as well. So the linkages for some residents in countries, when they're in urban spaces to when they go outdoors, there's a more direct connection. In the U.S., that's not always the direct connection. So it's really an opportunity for welcoming international visitors in to say, hey, when you're spending time here, welcome to this thing called Leave No Trace. And we can relate it back to what they know If they're German and familiar with the German national park system of responsible visitation, then we can make those linkages and easily invite them into this real-time way to help protect the outdoors. Well, sustainability is the topic of our time, so I'd like to hear your take on the compatibility between tourism and sustainability. Sustainability, it's become a buzzword. Certainly in the U.S., we weren't the first people to the table by any means. We certainly aren't the last on a global perspective, but we have a lot of peers from around the world who have been in this work for a long time. And I think in a lot of countries, sustainability and tourism can go together. And there are a whole lot of ways that they go together. What Leave No Trace focuses on is this very clear lane of the intersections of outdoor recreation and tourism, which here in the United States is huge because we hold our public lands as the crown jewel to invite people to come experience the U.S. 
So from our perspective, if we can help increase the carrying capacity of outdoor spaces, aka welcoming people in while minimizing impacts, then we're working towards something that can be sustainable. And really everybody should be welcome into outdoor spaces because of the health and the social benefits that it offers to us. And Leave No Trace really provides this real-time conservation solution that any visitor or resident can put into practice right away, picking up trash and litter, making the decision to, when you bring a pet into the outdoors of picking up after them and then disposing of that waste in an available trash can, using restrooms that are available. Those are all real-time sustainability practices. And I think sometimes, I know I feel this certainly with climate change and other things, everything feels so daunting as an individual and what can I do? What we always encourage people when they practice Leave No Trace is that you don't have to do it perfectly. Any amount of it is helping to protect that outdoor space. And your individual efforts, whether you are aware of it or not, people around you are viewing you. You're modeling something for them. And so that helps to pass along this ethic to other people. In some places, public lands leave no trace or language that is nearly exact leave no trace is used as rules and regulations. But from our organization's perspective, it's very much a personal ethic and education program that we can help bring more and more people into every day. Tell me how you work with local destinations. A lot of different ways, but the cornerstone of doing it is to take those seven principles of Leave No Trace, those seven very actionable ways to help protect and sustain the outdoors and put it through the lens of a local destination. So through the voice, tone, and culture of a place like the state of Arizona, for instance, or Sonoma County, California. And there's this great opportunity when marketing professionals who are so good at what they do to reach people through their channels can combine their insights with our team's knowledge of how to protect the outdoors and what it takes to actually do it. And then you have this really meaningful message that is coming from a destination that is shared by local stakeholders, everybody from the hospitality sector to guides and outfitters to really anybody who touches the visitor economy. So you can reach people before a trip. You can also reach people while they're there. I see from your stats that you've reached over 25 million people in the United States. I'm sure you know that all Brand USA's work is targeted toward international tourists. So, how do you reach international tourists, Andrew? And do the same basic principles in your mission apply, or is it a little different for someone on vacation from another country? International visitors are a lot like domestic visitors, whether those are out of state visitors or like here in Colorado, if I'm based in Denver but drive into the mountains, well, I become a visitor to that community. And it turns out Leave No Traces message is effective with all visitors, no matter where they're coming from. The opportunity we have with international visitors is to really put context and wrapping around what it means and what Leave No Trace is. Because again, they might be familiar with the idea of responsible visitation and these practices and ethics that can help preserve an area while we're visiting. They might just not know it's called Leave No Trace, or they might not know it's put through this kind of branding wrapper that a destination partner might be using Leave No Trace with. So if we can provide context to them, and again, make those linkages back to things they may be familiar with from their home home destination and say it's very much the same and we encourage you to play a role in it here. That's one big way that we can reach international markets. While we're based here in the U.S., we actually have chapters across the globe. So we have chapters in Ireland, Japan, New Zealand, and Canada. And those are all independent chapters that operate on their own. And they've been able to take Leave No Trace's research and data and the seven principles of Leave No Trace and turn it into something that's culturally relevant for Ireland, Japan, New Zealand, and Canada. And those programs are thriving and do a really great job of reaching their own domestic visitors. So when those people become international visitors, they're already introduced to Leave No Trace. They already know, oh yeah, this same thing we do here at home that I've heard of at home is also something here in the U.S. Is there anything else that strikes you? Recently, Leave No Trace and the U.S. Commercial Services have been working together to figure out how can we bring this really great messaging to would-be international visitors before they even leave their home countries. And so this July, U.S. Commercial Services and Leave No Trace are going to be activating on an entire month-long campaign to introduce Leave No Trace to international visitors and also talk about some of the work that our partner destinations are doing. What's really neat is that Commercial Services is linked up to embassies and consulates 
it. So we're doing about 20 different social media campaigns that are going to be broadcast out through the UK embassy, the German embassy, the consulate in China, in Australia, and a lot of different markets of all those would-be travelers. And again, it's just another way to introduce people to when you come to the U.S. and we welcome you to come, here's what we'd love for you to participate in. On your website map, I see various places labeled as hotspots. What does that mean? Yeah, the hotspot, it's a program that we run through Leave No Trace, and it identifies areas that have been suffering from really severe human-related impacts as a result of visiting typically park spaces. But we believe those areas can thrive again through Leave No Trace solutions. And so each location receives a unique and site-specific blend of programs and messaging and activation that's aimed at a healthy and sustainable recovery for that particular park. Everything from a national park unit like in Acadia in Maine to a state park unit in New Mexico. We've been able to run over 100 hotspots since 2010 in these various locations, activating with land managers and these local community networks to help build that park space back up to an area where it can receive visitors, but also minimize those impacts through novel and progressive solutions. So you're interacting with BLM and the Park Service and other entities? Yeah, that's exactly right. We've worked with Department of Interior and Department of Agriculture land managers for over 25 years and have really close relationships at the DC level all the way down to the various district levels. And it's amazing what that collaboration between agency or in this case federal and NGO can do together. And that same relationship exists for our state land managers as well. And I'll say in the last five or so years, that relationship has been growing and welcomed into indigenous communities and those land managers where tribal nations or Alaska Native villages or Native Hawaiian communities are inviting visitors to come visit while impacts take place there. And Leave No Trace has been able to support those communities' efforts to minimize visitation impacts. As we talk, I'm wondering how you get all the work done. I assume you have a small staff. So how do you accomplish this massive mission you have? In nonprofit life, we like to say that everybody wears lots of hats. And sometimes I envision that I have a hat on my head that has bills going in all direction. But our tourism team is pretty small. There are about four of us that work with our tourism partners in various ways. But it's really those partnerships that make the difference. It's DMOs and travel and tourism professionals who see the value in promoting responsible visitation through the Leave No Trace education platform and then using their resources and their channels to promote that far and wide. Across the 30 years that we've been an organization, we found our partners to be so crucial and interested in playing a role and we welcome all of those kinds of activations because it makes all the difference to reach people before they come to a destination, before they come to a park space in an effort to say, here's what you can do to minimize impacts and help keep this place protected for years to come. Do you have membership? The Leave No Trace organization does have a membership base. We have individual members who are typically people who care about the outdoors, spend time in the outdoors, or see the value in our program and what it does for outdoor spaces or local communities. So really big membership base that's also parallel to a really big partner base of corporate programs that we work with, tourism-based programs, but then also community-based programs guides and outfitters, local chamber of commerce, a lot of people fall into those buckets for us. And that's one of the reasons we're so successful at getting this message out. And do you have a lot of volunteers as well? We don't have a big volunteer network. That's not an approach that we've taken so far, just from a staffing capacity. But what we do through our partners or through that hotspot program or through many of the activations we have is that we invite volunteer networks to be a part of Leave No Trace so we can move Leave No Trace into these spaces where people are volunteering, where they're spending time. And that's been so crucial, help building more relationships and getting that boots on the ground volunteer force to help make a difference when it comes to cleanups or accessible trail building or many other projects that make the outdoors a more equitable and sustainable place. Before we came on the podcast, Andrew, you and I were talking about your work with the California Travel Association, and you mentioned to me that one of the big stumbling blocks is just getting started. What do you tell people about that? There's so many destinations that are looking for the entry point here and more than an entry point. Like we want to start this program now and have it set up by tomorrow. 
the reality is with anybody's resources, even if they are very well resourced, that that's just not going to happen. In conversations that the Cal Travel Sustainability and Stewardship Committee has been having is how do we offer California DMO members easy and accessible entry points? And so I think there are really a couple ways that anybody can go through these channels to get started. And it really begins with what is your local destination's values for wanting change? And what is the change you desire to see? What is the vision that you have, no matter what the work is you're doing, but in 10 years, what do you want to see as a result? And then work backwards from that. And don't get tripped up in definitions of sustainable tourism or regenerative tourism or green tourism. Those things might be important to you. The most important thing is knowing why you want to do this and where you see yourself going and working backwards so that you can have outcomes that are significant, so that you can have metrics for knowing how successful you're being. And then you can have activations, so reaching your local stakeholders, reaching your visitors so that everybody can play a role. Before we go, Andrew, what are your major goals for the next couple of years for Leave No Trace? This summer, we're actually launching an expanded education campaign called Training for All, and it really aims to make Leave No Trace's education even more accessible and culturally relevant for anybody who spends time outdoors, not just for the professionals who go on to teach this as a part of their careers in various ways, but also the people who are visiting the outdoors just for recreation purposes or the people who are visiting the outdoors in places that are adjacent to urban areas in particular. Leave No Trace isn't just for backcountry or wilderness type areas. It's very much for any blue or green space where outdoor recreation and the natural environment are coming together. So that's one big thing that we're launching this summer. Really excited to get that off the ground. And then more specifically to the tourism work, we're looking forward to continuing our leadership in the destination stewardship space and bringing together even more DMOs and travel professionals and government agencies and tribal nations together so that we can execute on real solutions for outdoor recreation and community visitation impacts. I had truthfully never heard of your organization before our chat, and now I am a huge fan. You've just converted me. (laughs) Thanks so much for joining me today, Andrew. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for having me on, Mark. I'm a big fan, and we love what Brand USA is doing for this movement of engaging people with progressive and novel ways to visit the United States. For more details, our listeners can visit lnt.org. And oh, I don't want to forget to mention that we have a whole series of podcasts coming up shortly from the Destinations International Conference in Dallas, Texas. If you're going, I hope you drop by the podcast booth to say hello. And that's Brand USA Talks Travel. I'm Mark Lapidus. Thanks for listening. Your feedback is welcome. Email us at podcast at thebrandusa.com or call 202-793-6256. Brand USA Talks Travel is produced by Asher Mirovich, who also composes music and sound. Engineering by Brian Watkins. Please share this podcast with your friends in the travel industry. You may also enjoy many of our archived episodes, which you can find on your favorite podcast platform. Safe travels.